I get so many builders or magazine people that always direct message me and ask me, you know, who's your photographer? So my photographer, I've gotten him a lot of business because um, his photos are really good. So, you know, it, it, it helps to use the most expensive photographer and videographer in town for sure. Jason, don't listen to that. <laughs> Do you come to Charlotte? <laughs> Hey everyone, Damon here, and I am at the Regional Christie's Conference at the Grove Park Inn in Asheville today. Really excited to bring you guys along on this. I'm gonna be speaking on one of the panels on social media, and we have 150 brokers from across the Southeast. We have Florida Panhandle, Polly's Island, Charlotte, like Norman, Asheville, Greenville, a big crowd here today, and I'm really excited to network, talk to other brokers about our properties, and spread the love. Come with us. So I'm gonna start with you, Liza. What social media platforms do you use most and why would you use those platforms? Um, so I mostly use Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, Twitter just, to me, I don't like the fact that it's limited to what you can write as far as the amount of characters, and I'm pretty winded, so I like to write a lot of stuff. Um, so I use Facebook only because I feel like Facebook hits a little bit more of your mature audience. Um, and I use Instagram because Instagram is hitting your younger audience, which would be you know your first time buyers. Although I do see Instagram kind of shifting, and I'm seeing a lot more mature people on Instagram nowadays, which is awesome. Um, LinkedIn, as you guys know, is is really strictly business professionals, um, and I think it's good to put yourself out there in front of you know attorneys, doctors, um, anybody that we're looking to try to get as clients on LinkedIn. Um, so that's really why I use the three of those, and I feel um, I like Instagram because I think it is a little bit more fun, and the whole hashtagging and everything is um, you know is big on there. Obviously, Facebook doesn't really use the hashtags at all, so if you put them on there, it does nothing. Um, but when you're you know copying to all of them at the same time, mm. then it's you know you just put them on there. But LinkedIn just started getting into the hashtagging too, which I think is helping. Well, I will say um, those are uh, the top three that we use. We're not, we don't really focus on Twitter, but I will say LinkedIn is a really important tool. And I think for everyone, it's very important to have a consistent, um, a consistent um, a way you go about all three. I think you need to be consistent. But on LinkedIn, I will say it's important to focus on links, LinkedIn and to have your background and to differentiate yourself and talk about your real estate background. I have gotten several really strong referrals off of LinkedIn. So people are looking for you know real estate professionals on LinkedIn, so don't discount LinkedIn. Great, thanks, Damien. Yeah, and I think I could echo uh, Liza and Stacy on that too. I, we use mainly Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, Facebook, pretty much, well, Instagram, you have a lot of your decision makers now, which is trending, like Liza was saying, to an older audience. So you have mostly women age 30 or 40 to about 60, which are your decision makers in the household. So we're seeing that trend upward a lot more now than, than ever before. Uh, and then we use Facebook because everybody and their grandmother is on Facebook, literally. Uh, and that Facebook has one billion active daily users. So, I mean, that's a great place, obviously, to bring people into your ecosystem, to distribute your content, and to kind of present your brand to the, to the world that way. And then LinkedIn, we also use, just because that's, when somebody Googles you, that's gonna be, LinkedIn has one of the top uh, search placements on Google. So when they Google you, and they will, as soon as they're referred to you by a friend or you know, as soon as they hear about you, LinkedIn's gonna be one of the top um, sites that comes up. So you wanna make sure that your LinkedIn profile is full, it's engaging, you have everything you know, outlined there very nicely, nothing incomplete there because that's gonna be one of the first places somebody's gonna go to just kinda get to know you and look into your background a little bit. So that's kinda why we have a presence on LinkedIn. Uh, we've also found on the flip side that LinkedIn is really good for us to find clients. So we'll, it, if we're looking at expired listings and we're trying to find somebody and it's a higher end listing, one and a half to two million plus, 
they're typically not going to be on Facebook or Instagram, or we're not going to be able to find them easily, but we can find them on LinkedIn. So by having a premium account on LinkedIn, we can actually message that person directly and you know, kind of give them a little pitch, send them to our website, show them our videos and what we can do for their property. So LinkedIn's been great for us for expired and, listings and, and generating business that and, way. And premium, premium is key because they don't know you're searching for them. Ex exactly, and, and with premium. It's, it's worth the investment. Yes, oh yeah, definitely, it's premium's gold. Yeah. yeah, so if you don't know that, if you don't have a premium LinkedIn account and you some click on somebody's LinkedIn, they can see who the last few people that clicked on their site was. So if you don't wanna go in more incognito, then get a premium plan. Um, and yeah. how much time, Damien, do you spend on social media yourself? Do you have an assistant? Do you post all yourself, or do you have something else that you use? Yeah, good question. So I have tried it all throughout the la you know the last eight, ten years, and I found that nobody, you know, I'm such a perfectionist that you know I I have to do it myself. So you know, I pretty much spend a couple hours a day working on you know the different social channels, uh, but I, I do it all myself. I when I try to delegate before, it's been generic, it's been people that, you know, I think you have to really spend time with to get to know you personally if you're gonna hand that off to somebody. And that's been something that I've had a hard time handing off, so I, I, do, I do it all myself. Stacy? Um, I, uh, I have a PR, a, an exclusive PR consultant and an exclusive uh, social media consultant that when I say exclusive, I'm their only real estate client. Both of them are good friends. My social media um, consultant is one of my best friends and has known me for 10 years. So um, I don't do any of my posts. If I, if I do any posts, um, like I'll send her a picture and I'll tell her what to post and she posts it for me. So I spend about you know an hour throughout the day looking and commenting and engaging, um, but I, I have someone that manages that for me and she uses the platform later um, if you're, if you want to do it yourself, it saves a lot of time. You can schedule uh, posts throughout the week. Um, it manages your hashtags. It shows impressions. You can see what your fo followers are and your engagement. Right, great, Liza. So, me being the overachiever that I am, and you only have 24 hours in every day, I have somebody that I um, employ to do all of my social media stuff. Um, she also does, you know, a lot of my brochure marketing and design for me too. Um, but on top of her, I still am married to my social media and spend on average probably about eight to 10 hours a week on it. Um, and the cool thing is about our iPhones is you can actually go on there and see which apps you're spending the most time on. And it's pretty amazing how much time I spend on the social media ones. <laughs> but um, as Damien said, I'm you know, extremely OCD about my marketing and you know, putting the right stuff out there. And I'm constantly you know, looking at what the you know, big agents from around the world are putting out there. I post a lot of stuff myself. But Meredith, um, we use a company called Hootsuite, um, which we found to be the easiest one. Um, and you just input all of your social media accounts in there. And like Damien or Stacy was set, touching on, you schedule your post, um, but I then go into Hootsuite throughout the day and we'll just post something immediately, especially if like a house just went under contract. Um, yeah. And we do that yeah. as well. Well, yeah. yeah, we schedule and then based on what's going on, you kind of input you know, a post throughout the day or you know, anytime it's relevant. Yep, absolutely. And I feel like it just streamlines it because it is overwhelming and we're very, very busy. Um, I, can, I mean, I find myself sitting at red lights and I'm on Hootsuite creating my post. Well, on that note, where do you find the content to post? How do you find something you know, that's relevant outside of just maybe your listings, obviously, but what else are you finding? Where else are you going to find content to post? Um, so I, I'm constantly looking at you know, our local companies, um, like in Charlotte, we've got Charlotte Agenda. Um, just so many different things of restaurants that are coming. Um, you know, events, music, uh, what new wine bar is opening up, um, what's the new inspiration quote for the week, or whatever it may be, you just constantly want to keep people involved, engaged, and tell them what's going on in the city. And it's really nice, too, when you're working with relocation people that start following you because they don't really know what's going on in the town, and you're informing them through your social media. Great. 
Stacey, you had mentioned to me also earlier when we were talking that you had some other ways of getting some content and reposting and sharing um, that also helped you get increased followers. Um, Do you want to touch on that? Yes. Um, so as I mentioned, I have a social media consultant and a, and a PR person. And it's very deliberate what we do and how we get followers. Um, and I have the pleasure of living in Savannah, Georgia, and, I've, uh, and I've, I have a niche, and that's historic homes. And with historic homes, it's a lot of great content. And I've got a lot of great photography of these beautiful homes in Savannah, Georgia. And so we go out when we have a listing, and we even do that for mid-century modern. I've had some contemporary. But we go out on Instagram, and we look for the influencers in those categories. So for example, you know, captivating old homes. They've got a very strong Facebook presence as well as Instagram. They've got over 2 million followers. You know, so what we'll do, we try to create relationships with these influencers. Um, American Mansion, Captivating Old Houses, um, you know, the, the list goes on and on. And for example, you know, we, we post, we tag them, we offer them our good, you know, our content. And in return, then, you know, we have a relationship with them and then they start posting my content, they tag me. Like Captivating Old Houses, they, they, made a, uh, they posted one of my properties not too long ago, and in four hours, um, we had 790 shares and 4,500 4, 4, likes. Um, so it's going out there and finding and creating partnerships with these, with these sites that are looking for content. So it's look for those people that are looking for content, and you can create this partnership. Great, thank you. And by the way, Stacy has 7,000 Instagram followers. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little jealous of that. It's <laughs> impressive. Damien. Yeah, so we, we get our content. We kind of have, you know, several channels, a lot of four or five different channels. Um, the first, you know, easiest to sort of share and repost and craft your Facebook pages and your social. Christie's puts out a lot of great stuff. And, you know, for my social, it's, it all has to be on brand, so it's, you know, it, we're very careful with what we post. And we find that, obviously, you know, Christie's is posting relevant real estate information or relevant lifestyle information that matches what our, you know, audience likes to see. So for us, you know, they're doing a beautiful job with their blog and, and their social channels, so it's really easy just to share that content. Uh, and then secondly, to touch a little bit more on what Stacy was saying, we kind of have a PR strategy as well. So we have a relationship with several local reporters uh, for different newspapers, news channels, um, as well as you know, regional and national press. So when we have a cool, unique property, we'll reach out to them and say, hey, you know, check these pictures out. Is this something you'd be interested in coming and writing a story about? And you know, we've had at least a dozen times where they say, yes, we'd love to. So they'll come out and give you free press, basically. I mean, they're gonna write a big article, they're gonna post it on their social channels. And then from that point, you can share directly onto, you know, your Facebook pages, your Instagram feed, uh, directly from, you know, these sources. So I use PR a lot. I mean, that's something I think it's underrated and a lot of people don't know how to utilize that in the real estate world. Uh, but it's basically a way that you can get, you know, more ex way more exposure on yourself or your properties than you ever could by a paid ad paying $1,000 to be in that publication because now you're the trusted resource. Like you're getting the reporters telling the story and showcasing your property. It's not you saying, hey, look at my property, buy this property. You're now the trusted sort of contact and resource on that. And then also our, and one of the things, the advantage that we have as realtors in this business it, that other service industry people don't have, you know, financial advisors, CPAs, doctors, lawyers, we're in and out of beautiful homes every day. You know, whether it's listings or we're out previewing homes for buyers, that gives instant content that people love to see. So people love to see babies, dogs, and houses. And I don't have a baby, but I have lots of houses to show, and my dog gets around on social media. Uh, every, I'll be walking down the street, and somebody will stop me and say, oh my God, is that Wellington? And I'll be like, who are you? Like, you know, in traffic. Uh, but so, you know, it's kind of that personal touch um, that works really well on social. But so take, leverage, your, leverage your listings. Um, we have an excellent photographer and videographer who happens to be here. I kind of snuck him in. Um, and he takes gorgeous videos of all of our properties, whether it's a $300,000 listing or a $3 million listing. He puts together this sexy video for us. And from that, I'm able to share that on our social pages. That gets a lot of traction. Jason, what we, we posted one video on Friday, and it, it's had over 7,000 views on a 7,500 7, 7, views. 
um, and that's all organic. I didn't have time to boost it or put any ad spend behind it. Um, so that's, you know, one thing you can do is take advantage of your media. So your, you know, really good looking pictures and video of your listings, get that out there. Break it off in pieces. So, you know, we do a lot of hor work with a lot of horse farms. So every Friday we'll post a different shot from a barn or, you know, uh, a pasture and tag Farm Fridays or something. So just that one listing will give us infinite amount of content that we can just distribute and drip out there. I, I do want to say, just to step back, the most important thing in social media is quality, photography, and videography. So that, that, is, that is something that you must have before you even start. Yep. Great. Um, so my 12-year-old just got Instagram, and she is all about every day, Mommy, I have so many followers now, and I have so many, so many likes on this post and that post, so, and I get this question from agents as well, is, is it about the likes? Is it about the followers? Is it both? What, what's important, and, and really, why are we doing all this outside of just getting our face out there? Oh, it becomes an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night to see how many people liked your post. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, as Damien was saying, it, it, it's huge to, they want to live your reality. I mean, think about reality TV shows and how big they are today. You, the, whoever is watching you wants to see what is your everyday life, what's your personality. Um, you know, so I always try to put what goes on in my real life, like about my son, my dog, you know, what am I doing? other things like that, but it is about the likes because um, as I think Stacy touched on too, you know, I engage with my people. If they write me personal direct messages or somebody comments on my photo that was good, I always make sure that I reply back to them and say thank you so much or, you know, I'll give them the website of the property that I've created because um, I think it's, they like that. And in, if it's somebody really big commenting on it, then I tend to try to always comment on their stuff also. And I see those likes and everything going up, but a lot of it has to do with the likes um, and the amount that you get is the quality of the content you're putting out there. Like I get so many builders or magazine people that always direct message me and ask me, you know, who's your photographer? So my photographer, I've gotten him a lot of business because um, his photos are really good. So, you know, it, it, it helps to use the most expensive photographer and videographer in town for sure. Jason, don't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you come to Charlotte? <laughs> yeah, and I think on the, the likes too, Instagram's fixing to do away with posting the number or showing the number of likes. So a lot of influencers are really up in arms about that. Yeah. Um, so that's just another thing of, you know, tech's evolving, you'll find a way to, you know, work around it and you know, evolve with it, but. And the question of the day is, how does that actually translate into business for you? Does it translate into business or is this just a piece of marketing out there? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I have fun with um, on Instagram is the new listings and some of the other agents, you know, I, I'll post a new listing and I'll say coming soon or, or coming soon to the market, but I, I won't, you won't be able to tell where it is. Like I'll just show pictures and it drives them crazy. Uh, and I get a lot of phone calls. Like when I do post like a coming soon, like I've gotten, you know, phone calls before it goes on the market and like 459 Tattnall, we did this exceptional rooftop view and that agent put that property under contract. We had multiple bids. So, um, you know, people are watching Instagram. Um, but I agree with that. Um, I think the one thing we haven't brought up is about doing stories on Instagram. The stories are huge. And every time I go to any appointment, even if, whether it's a listing appointment or like Stacy said, a coming soon, um, or if my photographer's there doing the photos, I'll do like a little video scan of the house quickly with him shooting it. And, I, and it's the coming soon. And then I just start getting boom, 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 message, message, message. Where's that? How much is it? And I even do that with other agents that do it also. And I have found, you know, where I can get my clients through the door firsthand. Yeah, and I do pick up a lot of clients by doing that um, because they'll, you know, people looking to sell or even buy will message me and go, oh, you know, that, where's that house? Or, and I'm like, oh, well, are you working with anybody? So I've, I've picked up a lot of clients from doing the stories. Damien, you mentioned um, some actual numbers for me. So can you quantify roughly, you know, your business on Instagram, what you say annually? Yeah, we, uh, so between Instagram and Facebook, I'd say we get 10 to 15 high-end deals a year from that, uh, listings. And then there's a whole other, we usually get about 20 other buyers uh, just from Facebook uh, marketing and putting ad spend behind some ads. 
but organically we get about 15 listings a year from that, which is, which is pretty cool. All right, great. Any wastes of time, things that you've tried before and were just a complete bust? I would say there's, I mean, there, there are a lot of people that are trying to get our money and our attention by saying they will handle social media and manage it for you. Just be very careful, make sure that they're gonna put out relevant content. Because if you're paying you know, $100 a month and you're just putting out generic content, nobody's gonna pay any attention to that and you're not gonna get any engagement. So I think it's important when you, if you are looking at a vendor or somebody's saying, hey, use us, let us manage your social media, that you make sure they're gonna give you some relevant content. It's gonna be local. Something that your audience can engage with and, and relate to uh, is important. So I think that's... I think it's very important that whoever you know helps you with your social media has a personal relationship to you. Otherwise, it will be very generic. Yeah, I, I agree with that. What are some things that you do on social media now that it is getting very crowded to stand out that makes you a little bit different than everybody in your particular sphere? I, I think, um, and I'm sh sure these guys will agree, I notice like when my posts get more likes throughout the day. So you've got to know those time frames during the day when people are actually on there looking. Um, so I try to post then, for sure. And I think that that has helped a lot. Um, where we are going, we don't, uh, I haven't gotten into IGTV yet. Um, and we're actually meeting with a videographer in October to film a day of content. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna start looking, and I, I haven't started IGTV, but, um, and more stories. But the one thing that I've realized is, we've done really well at posting properties, and I've got great, beautiful, old, historic properties. But what really performs well are the personal, the personal posts that have the real, you can't do too much personal, but you can't do too much real estate. Mm -hmm. And what we're, where I'm going is I'm, I've got too much real estate and we're going towards more personal Person. posts. Yeah, and that's a good, I mean, we've sort of found a way to marry that as well. We uh, started a web series, just kind of a take on Million Dollar Listing Show uh, that Jason does for me, and this will actually be a segment in the upcoming episode. This is the Jason show. Yes, <laughs> it's all about Jason. Jason, you have to give out your cards later and give me a percentage, of, you know, a cut. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we basically started this web series and it, it came about because I'm, I'm in beautiful, one-of-a-kind, multi-million dollar homes every day, whether it's on the lake, whether it's a horse farm, whether it's, you know, a gorgeous condo downtown. Uh, and my life is obviously wild and crazy being in this business. So I thought, why don't we do like a behind the scenes take of my life uh, and us in and out of these beautiful homes and put that out there. And that's kind of where Million Dollar Listing, where our version came about. So Jason will come with me and follow me around for a day uh, for in and out a couple appointments. You know, obviously it's a little tricky because some clients are more open to it. Some, you know, you have to know your clients before you even ask them. Um, and he'll do a lot of like meetings behind the scenes with my team or different you know, networking events that I'm doing. So we're on what, about 18 episodes of that. And I mean, we're getting like 10,000 views. We have a sponsor now, Monogram Concierge, sponsors the show. So they pay for you know, half of my production costs on that. So that's been a huge deal. I've had people, you know, I'll be out at restaurants and stuff and people will say, hey, I've seen your show, I love it. Or if we've gone a month or so without you know, putting an episode out because we've been busy, People will ask, you know, when's your next show coming out? Like, did you, you know, what's going on with that? So we found that creating that web show has been a huge catapult to kind of help bring more people into our ecosystem and discover us. And then also to make us the expert in the area because we're the only ones, you know, we out there doing this show, blasting it out on social media and, you know, kind of bringing people into our, our world and our life. Um, so you become just thought of as the expert in that arena, which so that's been pretty kind of good for us. Let's talk hashtags. <laughs> Why do we use these things? What do we, how do we know what to use? You know, what, what is the whole point of that? And, and help them give them maybe a couple of good ones that, or ideas of good ones that would be uh, useful. Um, I think hashtags are big. So what I try to do is um, Meredith and I always look at what some of the bigger agents around the world are using as hashtags. And when you type in a hashtag, um, you can follow that hashtag also. But when you type it in, you can see um, how many people are actually following it. 
So I always try to use the bigger ones. And what, what happens with that is when the people that are following those hashtags, then they can see that post. So you end up getting more likes the more hashtags that you use. Yeah, even if they're not following you, if you, they still if you see use it. that hashtag. Yeah. And then you can also, by hashtag, see how many posts are on that hashtag. So when we start looking at hashtags, you want, you, you want to make sure that you're using a hashtag that people are using and following. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I found recently, if you're, whenever you're um, posting an Instagram post, uh, tag the different areas you're in. Like for me in Greenville, if I'm posting a, something I'm doing in Greenville, I'll tag Augusta Road, downtown, North Main, you know, a lot of the areas around where I am too. So that way, especially nowadays with the, the buyers coming to town, they're going to be researching what's going on in the area. And I found a lot of these people are searching for different hashtags to see what's going on in real time. So if you make sure to tag in some of the neighborhoods that you farm, some, you know, even if you're not in that neighborhood or the post isn't about that, it's still kind of lifestyle content that you know, people will discover. So I, you know, I try to include lots of different hyper-local hashtags in there. All right. How about mentions also too? Any thoughts on that? Um, I think mentions are big. I mean, obviously I always try to tag um, Christie's. I always tag my firm, um, my uh, group. Um, and then if there's any local, you know, companies or anything big that I know is going on in, that relates to my post, then I'll always try to tag them too. I think another big thing going back to the hashtags too is when you're writing your post, like when I wrote about Asheville, I put hashtag Asheville instead of just writing, you know, in two days we'll be coming to Asheville. That kind of, the little things like that are going to make people grab it more too. But, you know, you can also you can do at and whatever that big blogger is in your city that has a ton of followers. Um, I always try to do that too. That helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I, I second, second those motions. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, after stalking all of your um, Instagram and Facebook and everything, I realized on Instagram especially, you guys are using the highlights as well. So can you talk just a little bit about why you would use little highlights? Those are, for those that don't know, the little bubbles that come up when you look up someone's name, just like these little bubbles. Um, so what, what's the purpose of that, Damien, and, and why would you save things there? Yeah, so I've found that's kind of, when people are, are visiting your profile, that's kind of a way just to give them a quick overview of who you are and how you operate. So like, again, for me, I want to be on brand, so that's going to have, you know, it's, it's got a section for MDL show, Million Dollar Listing Show, where we've got segments from, from our web series. I have one with Wellington, the dog, so it's just clips of, you know, my dog playing around. Um, our beautiful listings. So it's kind of just like uh, just different categories that are main highlights of what you do. So I try to do, you know, the golden rule of mixing personal and business in that same element with the highlights. And it kind of just gives people a, you know, real quick overview of, you know, who you are when they click on your profile. I agree with Damien. Um, it's also really nice too, because if you're really big into the stories, as we've been talking about, I always post my open houses and the flyers that I've created myself. Um, on my uh, on those bubbles, and when I'm at a listing presentation, and I have my computer, I can you know tap on those bubbles, and it breezes through all those different stories, showing how nice my flyers are that I've designed. Or if I have a house that went under contract in three days, they can see that flyer flipping through there. So I think it really helps with um, listing presentations, also. It's kind and of like a, a digital so digital showcase. It does, and it saves your stories too. Once exactly. you do that, otherwise it's, your it stories your disappear stories. in 24 hours. Yeah, so, yep. Okay. And the way the way I kind of handle my Instagram, my Insta stories are my behind the scenes personal life, and then my actual feed is really curated. So it's all you know, gorgeous pictures that were thought of, or pictures of my listings that you know, really good angle, that good filter. Um, but as far as the stories go, that's just you know, like I'm here at the you know Christie's retreat in Asheville, you know, having a blast. And then, you know, people start getting that, you know, behind the scenes, know, get to know you, get to like you, get to trust you. Uh, and that helps, you know, of course, lead to business down the road. Awesome. Okay, guys, we are about done here. Our hashtag, by the way, for this conference is IJCLUX2019. So hashtag your heart's desire and let's get some people following us. Thank you guys so much. Any, anything else? Yeah, I just, I know it's a little overwhelming to people, the social media thing, because it seems so techy and so difficult and so hard. It, you just gotta play around with it. And, and it's, it really does work. It and really does. It's a lot of work, but it's, 
it works. Certainly check these guys out online, see what they're doing for yourselves, check out each other, and go get them. At Damien Hall Group on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>